Storm is back in Vintage, and let me tell you, I am so excited. Today we're playing the Power Nines tournament winning decklist featuring Beseech the Mirror from Throne of Eldraine. Let's go check it out. I think that Beseech the Mirror is truly one of the best cards to be printed for the combo archetype across formats and who knows how long. This card is amazing. It's even revitalizing Vintage Storm, and that's what we're playing today. As I mentioned, it is the Power Nines deck list. The Power Nine, aka my great friend Justin, sent me the deck list, and what was posted to Twitter wasn't actually what Justin played. Justin played a pair of Cabal Ritual that you can see here, as well as the fourth copy of Fluster Storm. If you looked at Justin's vintage deck list, there was a Chain of Vapor and a Repeal. Those were not actually played. Today we're playing the 75 that actually won the tournament. And if you're unfamiliar with Beseech the Mirror, it is a four mana sorcery. You can bargain to sacrifice an enchantment artifact or token. You search your deck for a card, you exile it if you bargained it, and then you can cast it for free if it was bargained as long as its mana value is less than four. Otherwise, put that card to your hand. So with Beseech the Mirror, you can go get Yawgmoth's Will. Actual factual Yawgmoth's Will. If you've been watching my legacy videos, we've been playing Gaia's Will. Well, this is vintage. You get the broken card, and that's what we're doing here today. We also have Necropotence, uh, Tinker. How about Tinker? My favorite vintage card into Bolas's Citadel. There's so many good lines you can take. And obviously, when your format has Black Lotus alongside classics like Dark Ritual, you're able to do this very quickly and efficiently. And that's why you want things like Four Fluster Storm to back up your combo alongside Force of Will, and then the recently printed Lorien Revealed. It allows you to have a lower land count for your Bolas' Citadel, increases your blue count for Force of Will, and is a shuffle effect for things like Brainstorm or whatever. It's truly broken. This deck has so many good new cards in it alongside old classics. I'm sure you're going to love it. And without any further ado, let's hop on in to match number one. I'll see you there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to round number one. We're on the draw and I have no clue what we're facing. Here we have a hand that has a Sensei's Divining Top to use with our colorless mana. That said, I don't think that this hand is actually all that great. Like what does Mox Pearl do for us? Uh, it doesn't cast this Dark Ritual or the Cabal Ritual. I guess we have the Lorien Revealed for blue. Maybe I'm being too hard on this hand. It's probably fine. Let's keep it. Turn one Swamp. Thoughtseize. Okay, so there's a good chance that we're playing the mirror, and if I was the opponent, I would be taking the Lorien Revealed. I would try to cut me off of blue here. That would be my game plan. And they agree, they take the Lorien Revealed. We'll draw for turn. Another Dark Ritual. Not really what we needed. Play that top. Mox Pearl. And I'm going to just pass the turn here. I don't want to spin with the pearl and then have to waste mana if our opponent, uh, if I, like, I have to find force of will or something. So I'd rather just save the mana rather than spinning on my main phase. And this is a win. Assuming our opponent doesn't do anything to stop us, this is a win. It's like an opposition agent, for example. Maybe I shouldn't have said that card name out loud, but here we are. We'll play the Mox Jet. Dark Ritual. I'm going to cast Cabal Ritual. Let's try Beseech the Mirror. I guess we'll float a white. Sacrifice the Mox Pearl. If our opponent has an Opposition Agent, I can just put the card to my hand, I believe. So we do have a Deterministic win with Yawgmoth's Will here. Or I could get Tinker. My fear is some sort of main deck Graveyard Hate that I don't understand. I'm not really sure what our opponent's deck is. My gut tells me to just Yawgmoth's Will and win. I'm going to select the Yawgmoth's Will, and then I'm going to hold priority and cast the Dark Ritual for my hand. Yawgmoth's Will, Storm is 6. It has resolved. Sweet. Dark Ritual. Play the Mox Pearl. Our opponent has finally decided to hit the F6 key. I appreciate it. Storm is 10, and now we will Beseech the Mirror. 
Actually, I can cast it without the bargain. And now we just grab a Tendrils of Agony. Easy does it. Turn two. Through a Thought Seize. Not bad. Okay. And that is game number one. We'll head to sideboarding now. Still not really sure what our opponent's up to. And let's change this to Pile View specifically for Vintage. There's just too many cards for us to all see. Okay, so they're on some sort of black deck. We probably want Cut Down for Opposition Agent. Maybe even Dismember because it kills Shield Dreads and Opposition Agent. But we're not really that much of a deck that like Shield Dread punishes. Yeah, we have Ancestral Recall and Lorraine Reveal, but we're not drawing that many cards too often. I don't think I'm going to bring in the Dismember. I might be punished for that decision, but that's my choice. I will board out one Cabal Ritual. And then maybe one Flusterstorm. Let's try this out. Like, Flusterstorm's okay in this matchup. Obviously, our opponent is a Thought Seize deck, but they don't have a ton of targets, I think. This hand's pretty interesting. We'll try this. We're a payoff away from victory. Inquisition of Kozilek. I'm going to mental misstep that. We go to 18 life. Okay. Let's take a draw. Manifold Key. I love that. So if I'm willing to burn Dark Ritual, I believe we can win if I hop into Beseech the Mirror. Let's do the math here. So I Dark Ritual, I use one of the black to play Mana Vault. And then I have two black floating. I play Key, I untap Mana Vault. And then I have one Mana Floating. I can play Top, activate Top. That leaves me with one Mana Floating. So that actually doesn't do it. If that's the case, let's play our Mana Vault. Play the Key. Play top, untap the mana vault, and then let's... Oh, I can't spin. My bad. We will pass. Another swamp. Him to Torok. That's fine. We have a sad Cabal Ritual left. Let's auto yield to this mana vault trigger. No, I don't want to pay for it to untap you. I decided to take a draw step. I didn't need to. I could have topped in my upkeep. But if I top in my upkeep and if I draw something good, it doesn't really work out that well. So here I'm going to spin to up and drawing Lorian revealed a blue source here would be amazing. And we do find one, but if I want to cast it, I have to lose my top. I think I'm fine with that exchange. We'll fetch. We go down to 17. We'll grab another underground C. Untap the mana vault. Really a big fan of mana vault in these lists. So I actually was working on a list before Justin won and it didn't have Lorien Reveal because I felt like it wasn't actually very castable. Here, we're seeing that it's castable mostly because of the Mana Vault. Most lists don't play Mana Vault, and I think Justin found a really important interaction in this deck, in my opinion. Uh, our draw three was not very good, so getting rid of the top might have bit me in the butt here. Vampire Hex Mage, sure. So they're a depth stack. No... Before we move phases, I'm going to untap the Mana Vault to save a point of damage. Another Lorien revealed. Okay. Well, that certainly looks very good in this spot. Better than the Preordains I was playing. Let's attempt Lorien revealed. We'll draw three. Still no payoff. And we're... We have 42 cards left, so we're just underneath a third of our library left. So... We have a ton of hits that now win the game. I guess that's what I'm trying to say here. Black Lotus is fine. Nether Void. Interesting. I will hard cast Force of Will. Okay, so our opponent's going to attack. We will go to 14 now. Mana Vault. No, I will not pay. And I will untap the Mana Vault. Just trying to save on the damage. We are a Belasa Citadel deck. Urza Saga. That's a good one. Our opponent does have a Vampire Hex Mage in play, so they could just kill my Saga, but then they don't have the Dark Depths win, etc. They are going straight to combat, nothing in their first main phase, and now they'll attack, I will fall to 12 life. Yeah, I, I really do think Justin solved something with the Mana Vault. Mana Vault has looked so good so far. Nope. Take a draw. Saga goes up to 2. Play the Mox Emerald. We're definitely flooded a little bit here. We are officially at a third of our deck, and we have not... I mean, I guess you could consider Lorraine Reveal the payoff. Most lists count it as a land. 
that has the upside of being a payoff. But no Demonic Tutor, no Beseech the Mirrors, no Necropotence, nothing like that. Interesting. They're choosing to get in there. I am going to activate my Urza Saga to create a construct. I have a 6-6. Six, six. I will attempt to block. Okay. And they did not kill my Urza Saga. I was expecting them to sacrifice the Hex Mage to kill the Saga. Uh, sure. I'm not going to counterspell a removal spell on the Construct token. And now they're going to reanimate the Hex Mage. I am going to Flusterstorm this. Because I don't want them killing the Saga. Because the Urza Saga is going to get the Sensei's Divining Top that I shuffled away earlier very foolishly. Alright, I did not pay for Mana Vault to untap. Ooh, Brainstorm. We get a free shuffle effect off the Saga as well. Oh, so we're just going to win the game like a boring person? Jeez. Put back Mana Crypt. And Force of... I guess I could... It doesn't matter. I'm like arguing something that's just irrelevant here. I guess we'll keep Force of Will. Okay. So let's tap the Mana Vault. We'll activate to make a construct. I can get top. With our spare mana, let's activate the top. Doesn't matter. And now I can cast Tinker for Time Vault, getting rid of the mana vault, even though it's been such a good friend to me so far. And now we have infinite turns. Untap the Time Vault with our mana full key, take an extra turn. Our opponent is officially dead. And they concede the game. They knew it. We are 1-0 in this Vintage League. Feeling really good about this deck. I'll see you in the second match. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. We are on the draw in match number two. My hand seems reasonable enough. I will keep this. Our opponent has also kept seven. They play a Mox Pearl, Mana Vault, likely the Mirror, Valerian Academy. They have four cards in their hand. Okay. Mental Misstep is a good one. I'm going to main phase this Brainstorm, seeing what we can find. Get rid of the Bolasa's Citadel. And a Lorian Re Is Lorian Reveal better or worse than a Mystical Tutor? Like, having double top deck tutor is really awkward. I think I'm supposed to keep double Lorian Revealed. We'll pass the turn. They have five cards in hand. Mox Opal. Is this just outcome? This might be PO. They have three cards. Darset. I can't respond. Yep. They're going to fetch. They have two cards left in their hand. Underground C. They minus the Narset. They find the paradoxical outcome. No! I think we just lost. My hand was not interactive enough here. Mox Jet. So they drew another Mox. I don't believe that was one of the ones they returned. I'm going to attempt to counterspell the Mana Vault. They replay the Opal. Tinker. Yep, I'm super dead here. Looks like they're passing. They have three cards in hand. The only way we win this is if our opponent doesn't have any interaction. So we've grabbed our underground C. In our upkeep, I will Vampiric Tutor. Grab Black Lotus. Draw for turn. Play the Black Lotus. We're going all in. Beseech the Mirror, sacrificing Mox Ruby. They have Force of Will, exiling Hercules Recall. I'm going to call it. We didn't win this one. My hand just wasn't good enough for this matchup. One of the downsides of not looking up my opponents before I play. Alright, so against EO, I do like Shield Red. Mind Break Traps are also interesting. That's three cards. I think the second Cabal Ritual is going to be a card that ends up going into the sideboard a lot today. Maybe even both in this matchup. I'm wondering if I even want the Shield Red. Maybe I don't. I'm looking at the deck. I don't see another card I want to take out. It's possible that you just shouldn't be playing that card. Like, it should be something else. 
When talking to Justin before the event, he mentioned that is a card that could leave the deck. I think I'm going to try this. A little awkward. Our opponent has kept seven. I'm going to time walk. You might be saying, like, yeah, this is a great play because you can upkeep Mystical Tutor, but what do you do? Like, you don't have any more mana? So I think you're better off taking a blind draw, and we found Urza's Saga. I do like that. So if I wanted to Dark Ritual, we have five total mana. I can't get Necropotence because I don't have Quadruple Black. And I can't Tinker because I don't have a blue. Let's Demonic Tutor. I'm not sure what the choice is, though. Our opponent plays Force of Negation. I think I'm honestly okay with that. They have five cards in hand. Underground Sea. Box Jet. It looks like they're going to pass the turn. We'll untap, take a draw. Mox Sapphire, big fan. Wish I would have had this last turn. I guess we ended up being countered, so it didn't matter. We'll now pass. Our opponent has four cards in their hand. Mana Crypt. Storm is one. And it looks like our opponent wants to pass the turn. Interesting. Which isn't great for me, because I need them to have a Storm kind of three when they go to win. Let's activate the Saga. Ancestral Recall. Yeah, I can't stop that. I guess I can try to Mystical in response to see if they counter. They do not. Okay, so... What to do, what to do. I can get Tinker and try to win. Hope that they don't have any interaction. Might be the best play here. Okay. Not feeling very confident at the moment. So we'll draw Tinker. I'm not going to make a Construct. Black Lotus. Dark Ritual. Play the Tinker. And you might be wondering why I'm doing it this way. Like, I could have gone to combat, but then I lose the mana off of... I guess I didn't need to play the Ritual. Okay, that's fair. I did not need to cast Dark Ritual. But I lose the mana off of the Saga, so I want to do this in the first main phase. Force of Will. We will now hard cast Mind Break Trap. Okay. Looks like they have a Fluster Storm. Yep. Ancestral Recall is a very good card. They were just up on cards. Not a whole lot I could do. So our spells will be countered. Go to combat. We have to hope that our opponent kind of just dies to their own mana crypt alongside our construct. It's really the only way we can win this game at this point. Karn the Great Creator. Sure. They have killed my mox. And they have their own saga. Yeah, I'm dead. Like, we have lost this. I'm willing to pick it up. All right, so we are now one and one. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and mana tokens as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the Epic epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Round number three, we're on the play. So we're a black source away from greatness, but we have a Lorien Revealed. That's also our blue card. I'm into this. Keep. Our opponent has taken a mulligan and we are ready to play some games. Mana Crypt. Play a Nurse's Saga. Let's pass the turn. I don't need to play out the Mox Emerald at the moment. Our opponent untaps and plays a polluted delta. And it looks like they're just going to pass the turn. Big fan. Mana Crypt. Tails never fails except when it does. We're at 17. Is this an upkeep ancestral recall? It is. We will cast Force of Will. We drew Telerian Academy. Which is fine-ish. It doesn't win the game here, which is kind of a problem. A black source there would have won the game. The list that I was actually playing, which obviously isn't a tournament winning list, so you don't have to listen to me. Um, I did not play the Academy. I feel like we're actually kind of low on artifacts for Academy to be good. So I just ran basic lands and like I wasn't running the Lorraine Revealed. So I had two basic islands. I had four underground seas and more fetches. I just had a more consistent mana base, but a black source there would have won. I just think that Academy is very high variance in these decks, but maybe that's what you need. 
We won the flip. Take a draw. Chlorine revealed. Let's make another construct. So now our academy is going to tap for enough mana for this Lorien revealed, which obviously better than a black source. Uh, I think that goes without saying. We'll grab Black Lotus. Taps for five. Hardcast Lorien revealed. Yeah, I mean, academy looking amazing here. So differences between Preordain and Lorien revealed. This is Ancestral Recall. Force of Negation, Exiling Mystical Tutor. Okay. Let's go to combat. Get in there for five. Post combat, I'm going to sacrifice the Black Lotus to play Cabal Ritual. And now we will beseech the mirror, sacrificing Mana Crypt. Do we win? I will grab a Yogmoss Will and cast it. It resolves! We get to replay our Urza Saga as well. That feels pretty good. Okay, so I have changed my mind on both Telerian Academy and Lorien Revealed. This is why uh, you should play lists before judging everything. I think that they should have topped in response to the Besiege, but um, I made some assessments based on my previous vintage knowledge. I built the list that won the 2021 Eternal Weekend. Uh, I also won a lot of vintage events in 2018 and 2019, but I've been removed from the metagame, and sometimes that past experience doesn't align to what is happening right now and i decided to play somebody else's list that had success because they know what they're doing and it's really paying off here and now we grab the tendrils of agony and that's a victory so we played the beseech from the graveyard i don't know if i narrated that well enough for it to not be clipped but here we go so that is game number one in what i'm assuming is a mirror match sweet let's bring in the mind break traps maybe board out cabal rituals it's just that everything is so good in this deck. There's no fluff, which is one of the things I love about it. If I was going to Eternal Weekend, which is not looking very likely at the moment, it is my child's birthday weekend, so not looking great. But if I do end up going, I'd probably play this deck. This deck is what I'm most excited about. Yes, I 5 0 with Vintage Doomsday. I think Doomsday is amazing. Don't get me wrong. Love it. But this deck is something that I'm more passionate about. It's something I'd like to play more. And I do think that ultimately that matters a little bit more than the slight competitive edge of one against another. Although I do think in general, this deck is probably better than Doomsday. We need more data for that. This hand is not keepable, I think. Just too slow. No way to interact. We'll mulligan. Holy moly. This hand is uh, good. Keep. Get rid of the Blossom Citadel. Mox Sapphire. Mox Pearl. And they're passing with four cards. Okay. Take a draw. Yogmoss Will. Is that a good one? Mox Jet. Black Lotus. Let's sacrifice this for blue and attempt an Ancestral Recall. Force of Negation. I don't like that. Okay. They still have two cards in hand. Let's play Yogmoss Will. Getting back our... Black Lotus. Firm is five. Do you have another piece of interaction? Do, 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 All right, there we go. Our spell is finally resolved. Make three black. Let's beseech the mirror, sacrificing this Mox Jet. Storm is seven. Ah, bummer. Okay. Double interaction on turn one. You got me. So they have one card in hand and two permanents. We have one card in hand, one permanent. Not great. And a bunch of my best cards are in exile. So our opponent's probably favored from this position. We'll draw. Urza Saga goes up to two. Let's cycle this Lorien Revealed. Beseech the Mirror was a fine draw because if we draw a Dark Ritual... I guess maybe there's like something I could get off of the saga that could help me cast it into like a necropotence. Okay, we'll take a draw step here. Another saga. Love it. Okay, so what is the best card to get? We don't have Black Lotus. Technically, we could get like no Jets in Exile too. I kind of just want to get Soul Ring. Okay, pass the turn. There's a chance I was supposed to get Sensei's Divining Top, but. Top ties up a lot of my mana. Ooh, Black Lotus, a very good get from our opponent here. And is this Beseech? 
Demonic Tutor, that can get Tinker. Yeah, I mean, our opponent opened up on a very good hand, which is possible when you play this powerful deck. Although, I am not running Force of Negation. That was not in the winning list. It looks like they're on a different list today. There's Tinker. Orcish Bowmasters. Yeah, they're definitely on a different style of build. Bull Breacher, okay. Into Telerian Academy. Yikes. Not feeling great about this. We drew Tinker. Okay, I mean, that was one of the few cards that could get us out of this position. Let's see if our own Tinker is allowed to resolve. Nope. Okay, we can go to the next game. Absolutely destroyed. I think I'm willing to just run it back. On the play. Hands like all <laughs> interaction in Alurian Revealed. I think I'm going to try it out. I think one of the cards I've not been impressed with so far is Mindbreak Trap. It has just seemed really awkward. Play a soul ring and let's time lock on tap take a draw that was an amazing hit so we can now cast this Lorian revealed with backup all right academy i'm sorry that i ever doubted you you are amazing i'm going to pass the turn here i don't want to die on the first turn and if i cast ancestral recall now that's a possibility so we're going to just pass underground c and they're going to send it back cool Misty Rainforest. Let's play top. Play the Misty. Tap for some blue. Let's attempt an Ancestral Recall. The Force, I will Fluster Storm. We'll do same targets all at the Force of Will. And now they're going to Ancestral in response. I think I want to spin top here. We find another Mind Break. Weird. Why is it showing me it like that? I don't like that. Um... Oh, because it's the last card I didn't click. I'm a dummy. All right, so I'm going to play a little bit cautiously here and activate the top. And in order to cast this Mind Break Trap, I have to hard cast it. So that is my game plan. Hard cast Mind Break Trap on Ancestral Recall and the Force of Will. And if our opponent has another piece of interaction, I could alternate cast the Mind Break. Ancestral. Beautiful. So we should have a win next turn that's protected. Our opponent has five cards and one land in play. Sure, you can have a needle. You shuffle the way the top. So we don't even have it right now. Yeah, sure. Got it. Mox Jet. Tap for a bunch of mana. Tap the Soul Ring. Let's Tinker. I love to Tinker. It's my favorite thing about Vintage. Grab Citadel. Mana Vault. Or I'm sorry, Time Vault. Necro plus Citadel is an amazing combo, by the way, um, because you can just remove the top card of your deck over and over, much like you would a Sensei Divining Top for one life. It is amazing if you're unfamiliar with that interaction. Now we are two and one with two matches left. Stick around. Let's finish this with a four and one, hopefully. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Match number four, we're on the draw. We're facing Ironic Gentleman, who I recently faced in the Legacy Storm Mirror. I have to imagine they're playing the same thing here. All right, so we've opened up quite the hand. We're a black source away from victory. I think I'm going to keep this and get rid of the Vampiric Tutor. Let's try this out. It's not actually a black source away from victory. Uh, it, it, it was if I kept the Vamp, but I, I'm not keeping the Vampiric Tutor. It goes on the bottom. Misty Rainforest. Not a bad draw. Let's play that out. The Taxian Probe will go to 18 life. Force of Negation, Dress Down, Urza Saga, The One Ring, Force of Will, Time Walk. What a hand. Double back up. Okay. Let's play out this Mana Crypt. And I think I'm going to Time Walk here. Mana Crypt happens. Tails. I lost the flip again. 14. Another Lorien revealed. We have four mana. I'm going to pass. They play the Urza Saga. And they're going to Time Walk. I'm okay with that. Saga moves up to two counters. Now they're passing. On their end step, we will cycle a Lorien Revealed, grabbing an Underground Sea. Mana Crypt again. At 11, not looking so good. Mystical Tutor. Interesting. I'm going to hope that this works out for me. I'm going to 
purposely play this Lurian revealed into their known counter magic, which could be risky. Ooh, and they don't fight. That is very interesting. All right, so their game plan then is that on their turn they're going to cast the one ring, cast the one ring, uh, by using Urza Saga to get like a soul ring or a mana crypt here, and that I won't be able to kill them. Yep, I cannot interact with the one ring, and our deck I don't believe is capable of winning through it. I guess technically, I can, Blossom Citadel twice. That's how I win. Okay, that is the game plan. Blossom Citadel when I'm at eleven life. Hey, we want to flip. How about that? And we drew the Citadel. I was going to Beseech for Tinker, but here we are. And we'll make three black, a bunch of blue. Bolas's Citadel. Double Flusterstorm back up. Our opponent has six cards in hand. We know three of them. Force of Will exiling Dress Down. I will cast Flusterstorm. Force of Negation exiling Dig Through Time. I will cast a, another Fluster Storm. We have two cards. We had a third force! No way! No way! Brutal. They get to untap with the One Ring and draw two cards. Okay. Triple counter magic in their six card hand. Wild. So now they're already up to three cards again. They play Gitaxian Probe. They cycle a Lorien Revealed. They have two cards now. Mana Vault, no, I'll take one, and then Mana Crypt, Tails, let's upkeep Mystical Tutor, is it just Dark Ritual here? It might be, like Ancestral or Tinker doesn't seem great, I could get Yogmas Will itself, but I don't think Yogmas Will with our current graveyard wins without a Dark Ritual, if I grab Cabal Ritual, it's a ton of mana. Let's do Cabal Ritual. It's probably the better choice here. Obviously, I'm going to lose to any sort of interaction our opponent has. Attempt to cast Cabal Ritual with Threshold. Beseech the Mirror with Bargain, sacrificing the Mana Vault. You might be saying, why not Mana Crypt when I'm at 10 life? If this gets countered, Crypt keeps me in the game longer. We'll grab Yogmoth's Will and cast it. What are your two cards? Brutal. Ah. Oh. Okay, not looking good for us. And they get to untap with the One Ring. I believe we have been outclassed. They've drawn four cards this turn. They're just so far ahead. They play a Brainstorm, Demonic Tutor, and Karn the Great Creator. I'm good to concede here. We have been sufficiently wrecked. What to do, what to do. I think I'll bring in the Mind Breaks, but honestly, if I play this deck again, I don't think I'm going to play Mind Break Trap. It has not felt very good to me. I think we take out the Cabal Rituals again. Hit Submit. On the play for game number two. Fortunately not. This do. I'd probe into a land and then nothing. I'd have to, like, probe into Black Lotus for this to be good. Or Lotus Petal. I think we're better off going to five. Guess we keep this? I don't love it, but here we are. Underground Sea past the turn. They just have a polluted delta. On their end step, we will cycle Lorraine Revealed. Looks like they're going to attempt to resolve Ancestral Recall. Mental Misstep. Lorraine Revealed. Come on, Tinker off the top. Let's see it. Mystical Tutor isn't bad. Mana Vault will pass. And they're going to just pass the turn. That's scary. End step Mystical. We just have to jam. I don't think we're going to win a long game against the seven card hand, so we're just going to do what we came here to do. Put Tinker on the stack. They force. I will fluster. You have five cards. Tinker? A great sign. Citadel. We have to pass the turn. <laughs> okay, that's a bummer. They're passing. Yogmoss will. That's a good one. Cast this holding priority. Our top card is not an instant. They attempt to force a negation. I will try a Fluster Storm. So they must have drawn force a negation for turn. Yogmoss will. That resolves. We'll play the Mox Emerald. Galarian Academy. Dark Ritual. All right. Land is our current top card. We'll tap the Mox to play a Mana Vault. Now we can tap the Academy, tap the Mana Vault. Let's Mystical Tutor. From seven. 
I should have thought this through. Um, I mean, I could still win here with, like, a Demonic Tutor, actually. Cast Demonic Tutor. Go grab Tendrils of Agony. And our opponent concedes. I got very lucky that game. Holy moly. Resubmit. One thing that's pretty interesting to me, and I talked about not liking Mind Break Trap. There's two cards I have in my mind, but I don't think either of them are perfect. So maybe Mind Break is better, but when you look at traditional builds of the Perfect Storm, which is what this deck is often called, they run Thought Seize because Thought Seize is one of the best cards in the format for picking apart hands and counter fights. These more recent Besiege lists aren't playing any, and I think that's a little bit strange. Ooh, Time Vault. So if they have Urza Saga, it tells me that I have to win immediately. I think I'm actually going to let it go. It might bite me in the butt, but it's my choice. So Thought Seize is obviously a really good card. And then I'm considering, what if we ran Force of Negation instead, but our blue counts a little bit low. So my gut tells me Thought Seize, but Thought Seize is really only good when you're on the play. So I'm giving some take there. Another land was honestly not a very good draw for us. I think I'm going to just pass. They do not have Urza Saga. They play a Brainstorm. I think I would have liked playing the Brainstorm free flooded strand in case you did find the saga, but oh well. Our opponent is fetching. Granisfear. Wow. I'm going to attempt a force of will on that. Our force of will has resolved. On their end step, I will vampire tutor. We do not have a Beseech win right now. Uh, I just don't have the resources in order to win with Beseech. I also... I could get Tinker. And then Dark Ritual Tinker away my top. Which is very risky. But it's a choice we have. Or I can just go get Ancestral. Hmm. I think I'm going to go for the Tinker win. Let's Dark Ritual. Since he's Divining Top. Play Academy. Tinker sacrificing top. Citadel. Mana Crypt. Bluster. Okay, we have to pass. If this was a Thought Seize, for example, like the older the Perfect Storm decks didn't run Fluster Storm, instead they ran like four Thought Seize, that would have made your Citadel continue there. Instead, we had to pass the turn. I'm dead to Tinker. What is this? I will cast Fluster Storm for three. They can pay for it. So we need them to not have a mana in hand and for their citadel to brick because if they have a mana in hand they can just go get uh key and then have key time vault they get citadel and it looks like they're going to pass the turn okay so we're in a weird game here tails and i won the flip draw for turn another fluster no i believe we just lost the game that is so defeating. Okay. All right, we need our opponent to reveal like double land here. The one ring, obviously a great draw. They draw off the one ring. They play a dress down. They fetch. We really need them to fizzle. They have four cards in hand now. It just seems so unlikely that they fizzle. Dig through time. I'm going to attempt a fluster storm for four here. Okay. Here's to hoping that their citadel bricks. They have five cards in hand. They play Gitaxian Probe. Black Lotus. No way. You're passing the turn. So you have to remember that they do have ring protection. If I'm going to win this game, I have to activate Blossom Citadel to make them lose 10. We'll draw Beseech. Mox Pearl. Come on. Another counterspell? I can't even play the misstep. This is one of the worst Citadels I've ever had in my life. <laughs> And I played like four flusters and pyroblasts and missteps in all of the paradoxical outcome decks in the past, but I think we're just dead. They draw two with the one ring. There's a saga. Turn the great creator. Yeah. They're going to go get an artifact from outside the game, which will be Mycosynth Lattice. And now we are locked out of the game. Yep. I believe I can still cast cards from the top of my deck. Draw. Player land. Mox Emerald. I would need them to not have a force in order to win. Let's sacrifice the Mana Crypt. The Force of Will. They're at four life. Okay. 
We want to flip Tendrils of Agony off the top of our deck now. Play the Black Lotus. Uh, I should have held priority. I could have Mind Break Trapped my own Lotus there. That's my bad. I have to pass the turn now. Our opponent's going to lose two life off the One Ring. So they have to win this turn, I believe, or sacrifice the One Ring. Mox Pearl. They draw two cards off the ring. They have nine cards in hand. Our opponent plays the Sensei's Divining Top. I'm going to go to nine life and mental misstep this. And they Fluster Storm. If I mind break this, I'm dead to them activating Karn on uh, Lattice, so I have to let this resolve. And my lands do not tap for mana, if you're unaware. If you're watching this video and you're saying, Bryant, why didn't you just pay for Fluster Storm? These, none of my lands tap for mana, so I cannot pay. And if I mind break trap there, I lose... Four life going down to five. Our opponent pluses their Karn on Lattice and attacks me for six. There are two artifacts or two permanents away from killing me with Bolas' Citadel as well. So Construct Token plus minus Karn actually does it. Yeah, our opponent has the win. Oh, and they just have the Manifold Key. That's disappointing. Uh, let's attempt a Mind Break Trap. Our opponent has to miss Lethal here in order for us to win. And I have officially been defeated. All right, we are now two and two. Not the best record, uh, but I still love this deck. Let's just keep our chin up and hope to win match number five. The Command Tower software by Eminence Gaming is perfect for hosting your own magic events with features such as easy to create event registration for four player and one on one Swiss based games. Event management has never been so simple and it's done on the web, no downloads are required. You can sign up for $5 by visiting eminence.events slash subscribe. The fifth and final match, we are on the play. I am not going to send this back. Keep, 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 keep. Let's start off with the Gataxian Probe. See what our opponent's up to today. Stacks. They have a Wasteland for my Saga, and I have double Fluster Storm. Her hand is not very good. I think I'm going to try to trick them here by just playing Saga Pass, and see if they'll just turn one to Sphere, so that way I at least get one Construct token. And they did not fall for my trick. Okay. Can I please have a besiege? You drew Mana Crypt? No! Alright. That was one of their best draws here. Yep. That was not very nice of you. Draw for turn. The Watery Grave. Play Mox Ruby. Black Lotus. Pass the turn. And Foster Storm looking embarrassing here. When it plays a Strip Mine, destroys my Underground Sea. So we know that they've played Strip Mine and Wasteland, the Sphere of Resistance, the Soul Ring. So we know three of their four cards. Play the Mana Crypt. Ouch. Watery Grave brings me to 16. I guess maybe I shouldn't have done that play. That play might have been bad. Yeah, I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm just a little frustrated at this point. I think I should have just passed and then alt-casted Force of Will instead of, like, putting two permanents into play that kill me. Yeah, I don't know why I did this. I don't have a good justification. It's not like these Fluster Storms are useful either. All right. Come on, Urza Saga. Fails. I'm at 12. Mock Sapphire. We'll play that and pass. Crucible of Worlds. So I'm now Crucible locked. But I have tons of artifact mana, but I can't win with Construct Tokens. That is not a possibility anymore. And I don't think I'm going to be able to storm off through a Sphere of Resist. Especially not with a Soul Guy Lantern to play. Okay. Tails. Draw for turn. We'll pass. They have lost their first Mana Crypt uh, flip. I'm trying to think of like how I could possibly win this game, and I'm not coming up with much. Our deck doesn't have any main deck answers to Sphere Resistance. So the last card in their hand is Ancient Tomb plus one unknown. It's a Nettle Cyst. Okay. It's a big creature. Tails. Draw for turn. Pass. And the One Ring. Okay, I've seen enough. We can go to game number two. We want Mind Break Traps and Hercules Recalls. Sphinx of the Steel Wind. I think we probably want the Cutdowns and Shield Dread. It's a lot of cards. But the bright side is here. We can board out Fluster Storms. Those cards are terrible here. Mental Misstep isn't great either. That can definitely be sided out. And now you're at 62. So you have to decide what cards do you not actually want in the matchup. And I think it's probably the Shield Dread. 
having an alternative beatdown plan is nice, but it's not necessary. And maybe the Citadel when you're bringing in Sphinx. Try it. Game number two on the play. Ay ay ay. This hand doesn't actually do anything. I think you're supposed to mulligan. I don't know what this hand actually does. Like, it's obviously very powerful, but it doesn't do anything. So you bottom the Tendrils of Agony. You can Dark Ritual Time Vault on one. You can't Tinker on two. This hand doesn't actually play magic. We'll go to five. I don't know. So what four card hand? So it's got to be like turn one Tinker. Or like turn one Beseech win. But this hand just like forces their first prison piece and then does nothing the rest of the game. I'm going to go to four. This hand doesn't have a black source. It's so, it, I mean, this is a turn one win if this has a land in it. The three. Okay. If I win this, I, I don't know. Like, this just seems so unlikely. Mox Pearl. Soul Ring. Time Vault. Pass. Mox Emerald. Mishra's Workshop. No Rod. And Thorn. I've seen enough. Okay, so we unfortunately went two and three in this video. I'm willing to admit I definitely had a misplay on not mind break trapping my own Black Lotus. That was not great. I don't know if we would have won that game, but that was a, a misplay on my part. Um, the deck felt decent. I do think there's some things I want to change. I hated the mind breaks. I'm not sure if the sideboard is built right, but mostly only because we only faced like really two archetypes. We faced blue mirror matches and then one chop stack. And our cyborg felt really short on chops interaction. And it didn't have anything really for the blue matchups. Like mind break felt terrible. Um, not a big fan. So moving forward, I'd probably first say trust the vintage experts. I'm certainly not one of those. I don't play it that often anymore. But I would like Thoughtseize in the deck. I felt like the list was missing Thoughtseize. And then I'd probably shove these two flusters in the sideboard where the mind breaks are. So... Three to four thought sees is really what I want. And I'd probably find some way to make that work. But that's all I have. That's my only thought or suggestion. And the sideboard, I don't know. We just didn't use most of this. Like Portal of the is fine. Shield Dread felt like it was an unnecessary slot. We never faced initiative. Like we just didn't get to use most of this. So take my opinions with a grain of salt as always. But thank you for watching. Have a great day and keep storming. You know what to do, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you enjoyed the deck list in today's video, go to the comment section, check out that pinned comment where you will find two links. One for TCG player, so you can buy the deck, and the other is so that you can rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Card Hoarder is the best rental service for Magic Online. They truly make playing online extremely affordable. Go check out Card Hoarder today.